This video is part two of a two-part series looking at the aerial photographs of Rowan Road in Mitcham or Stratton Vale, whichever way you want to look at it. However, they were in Mitcham at the time that there was a Mitcham Borough Council when these photographs were taken. So, from the Mitcham History Notes website, on the menu line, Photos brings you to this page and under Aerial, click on Mitcham and these photographs that we're looking at today in part two concentrate on the factory of Smith Meters. There are two sets of photographs, one for 1947 which were photographed on the 24th of June which was a Tuesday they're very clear photos. I'll be concentrating mostly on these. The other sets were 1954. They were photographed on the 4th of January, which was a Monday, and hence, being in the middle of winter, are a bit darker. But we'll have a look at one of those to see the building of a road. Okay, let's start off with the first of eight photographs from 1947. As I say, these photographs are nice and clear, 24th of June, 1947. Here is the factory of Smith Meters. This is Ryan Road along the bottom. And just to confirm, moving the mouse over the photograph shows the caption, Smith Meters Limited Works on Rowan Road, Mitcham, 1947. Flown 24th of June, 1947. Let's get ourselves oriented by looking at a map. So we go to the National Library of Scotland website and I'm going to use the geo reference maps. And the reason for that is that when we look at an area such as this, meter works, etc., in the bottom left hand corner of the screen it says change transparency of overlay. What that means is if you set the background map, here is the choices. Here are the choices, beg pardon. Bing hybrid, so that would be a satellite map with road markings. So let's have a look like let's have a look at what it's like today. You change the opacity to reveal a current map. And you see what do you see? Is that a trading estate? Let's have a look at it using Apple Maps. And today that's called the Vale Industrial Park. So let's change our transparency of overlay back to see the 1950s map. It says it was surveyed in 1951, published in 1952, which is just later than the aerial photograph, the 1947 one that we're looking at. So as a reminder, as we're looking this direction, Windermere Road is on the left, the factory of the Marco Refrigerators, uh, Stirling Nurseries, Hassox Road, and to the right of the Manor Works, Long Thornton Road. So, back to the photograph. So, Windermere Road, Long Thornton Road. Rome Road. Let's see what we can zoom in on. Not too bad. So this is the factory, the front of the factory. Are there any other photographs that allow us to look at these shops in a bit more detail? Let's have a look at some other photos then. So that was number 48, which is the first in the list. slightly angular view 
uh, yes we've got two settings of zoom here you can make out Smith meters on the front of that building as I say this was on a Tuesday so there are people at work let's have a look at these shops here this is Windermere Road let's look at the map again There is a telephone call box, TCB, a letter box. Yes, you can see the call box there and the letter box. So we have one, two, three, four shops. Numbers one, seven, four, going up. So they're going up normally to one, eight, zero. Now, I have some advertisements for shops along Rowan Road that are from a 1931 pamphlet for the Long Thornton Residents Association. So 182, so where is 182? That's that shop there. Let's go back to the photo. So this shop is 182. And number 182 in 1931 was a fruit and veg shop. HC Bridges, 182 London Road. For prompt delivery, shop local for finest fruits and vegetables. At the lowest possible prices and highest quality. I will call for and deliver all orders. Distance no object. A trial will be sure to please you. Light contracting done by motor. So that's that fellow there. He's got some customers. There's a woman with a pram. Hasn't got any stalls out though. Again, this is 1947, that was a 1931 advert, so I'm not really sure where it still is the case, but it's the nearest I could get to it. So that's 182. So we have 182, 184, 186, 188, 189. What else do we have? 176. That's further down the road. 133, that's the other side of the road. 184. For fried fish and potatoes. Finest quality, carefully prepared, perfectly cooked at reasonable prices. Daily midday, 12 till 2, evenings, 7 to 11. W Bell, Late Crystal Fisheries. 184, also 12 Greyhound Lane. Is he open? Doesn't look like he's open. Perhaps this photograph was taken in the morning then. Or sometime between two o'clock and five and seven o'clock. One eight zero, G R Beden. So that's now back over here. So that's one eight zero, and that's a news agent, tobacconist, confectioner, wholesale and retail, morning and evening deliveries of papers and periodicals, evening deliveries of papers. Easter eggs, a large selection of all the popular makes. Delicious ice cream. Mmm. It's really good. That was 180. It's a fair amount of cars parked up. That looks like a delivery van for one of the shops. So this is Gardens of Rome Road. Good quantity of sheds here. Ah. Everyone's got a shed. I suppose one person gets a shed and the next one over says, oh, I'm going to have a shed now. Although having said that, there's no shed here. Oh, it's on the side because it's an end of terrace. Yeah, okay, gotcha. So as I say, that's Windermere Road. And this is Long Thornton. Ooh. What do we have here? It looks like a police box. Let's look at the map. So there's the meter works. Yes, it says PCB, police call box. So this is 1947. 
I have a book called Practical Information for All, which was published in the 1930s and um, tells people what to do in case of emergency. This book, Practical Information for All, I believe is from the 1930s. There is a chart showing life insurance premiums up to 1936. But it's possible this was reduced in the late 1930s. There's a chapter on emergencies and how to meet them. How to telephone for help. In a town, the finder should look for a house or shop which has a telephone. Or, if possible, go to a police or public call box. In using a dial telephone in the latter, the public call box, dial zero, except in districts when the emergency call 999 is used. In public call boxes, do not insert money, but press the special emergency button above the receiver. This will establish immediate contact with the exchange. As soon as the exchange answers, say ambulance and give the relevant details. If you use a police box, tell the police where the accident occurred. They will summon an ambulance. And there's a diagram. Free telephone calls for help in the emergency can be made from these boxes, but only members have keys to open the AA box. There you go. I must admit, I thought that police call boxes were just for the police, but apparently anyone could use them to call the police. I suppose this is positional. When the police get a phone call from a call box, they can see which call box it's coming from. This is... A really good advantage, so it saves any confusion. Someone might ring up the police and say, there's been an accident in the London Road, which could be anywhere. So, that's kind of interesting. There's also a pillar that looks like an air raid siren on top of it. So that was still there in 47. So, what else do we have around here? The view goes over here. Let's have a look at the map. Zoom out a bit. So that's the Stanford Way. Stanford Way. This looks like allotments over here. It's shown on the map of 51 as being a recreation ground. So it would have been planted during the war for the food effort. Oh, there's actually tennis courts there. So the tennis courts surrounded by allotments for growing food for the war effort. But whether it was the case that they kept the tennis courts open during the war, I'm not sure. And that building is St. Olaf's Church. And St. Olaf's Church, or St. Olive's Church. What does it look like today? So, let's move the transparency of overlay down. Still a recreation ground, which is good. Yeah, the church is still there at the end of Middle Road. Or access from Church Walk. St. Olaf's Walk. There you go. It's still a recreation ground. Good. It's curious that the Smith Meters factory became a trading estate. There was a possibility of contaminated ground being unsuitable for housing. It's just a guess. 
And that was where the refrigerator company was. And there was an allotment called Sterling Nurseries. Yes, the Sterling Nurseries. And that's now Sterling Close. So anyone who lives there wondered why it was called Sterling Close. It had nothing to do with Sterling Moss. It was the Sterling Nurseries. And again, we're talking about a factory not being built on, a factory site not being built on for housing. And that is, I'm guessing, as you imagine, that's Liddles. Let's have a look. Yes, that's Liddles. So Liddle is built on the site of the refrigerator company. I suppose that's appropriate. Right. So, what do we know about Smith Meters? I have on my website. Mission History Notes, an entry for Smith Meters Limited. There's an advertisement there. Looking for, a, for, for female clerical workers. That was from 1961. Hollerith Punch Operator. That's uh, punch cards for uh, computers. Hollerith Verifier. Yes. Buses 118 and 130 stop at the works. 1968 there was a strike 1962 though gives us some information new center for the happy factory mr norman smith chairman of smith meters Ryan road at the opening of the firm's new dining and recreation center last week said this building is a sign of the great success the firm has had over its many years so how many years are we talking about let's go down because there's a bit of history smith meters was founded in 1834 Established in Snow Hill, in the city of London. Snow Hill, that's, um, that's near where uh, the City Thameslink station is. Moving to Kennington in 1865, in 1929, an additional factory at Mission was built. So this is a 1962 article which says, The company now employs 2,300 people, 1,750 of them at the Rowan Row factory. So, that's interesting to know, isn't it? That that factory employed at that time around 1750 people yes quite an enterprise let's have a look at some more photos that was 49 what does 50 give us 50 gives us a view of the factory from the other side so looking now towards the Rome road we've got one level of zoom we can see a bit more detail around the back of the factory. And what if that building there was a boiler room? A big chunky chimney on the top. This this road from Rowan Road is Rowan Crescent. And this bit here leads into a piece of scrap land. I'll come back to that in the 1954 photos. And what's further up here? Is that the railway line? It looks like a railway line, doesn't it? Let's go back to the map. Petrol pump works. There's the railway line. Is the petrol pump works visible? Mm. 
seems to be almost in line between the meter works and the railway. There's the meter works. Not sure. Could be. Could be that there. Okay, let's go to another photo. This view now is there's Rowan Road. We're now looking towards Mitcham. Hmm. How much of a zoom do we get? Two lots, good. There's the gas works at Western Road. And these buildings here are part of the Holborn Union Workhouse. All gone now. Uh, Sunshine Way was built round about there on Bomb Road. I think that's the water tower. It's a factory on Western Road. I would say that that's the Majestic Cinema. So that'd be the Fair Green. And we've got this in view. This area of nurseries was Mizzen's and is now occupied by what was originally Eastfield Secondary School, which I went to. It's now the St. Mark's Academy School. And these huts is where the Laburnum Road housing estate is now. So these huts are temporary housing after World War Two. People being made homeless from homes being destroyed by enemy action. Therefore, here is the Eastfields Road allotments. Yeah, there's the factory of Renshaws, Marzipan Factory, and the Tootner Mitchell Football Ground. That looks like a bit of damage to the negative. Or is it damage to the actual stand? This is where we need a football expert to look at this photo. So, must be the really level crossing here. I say this is Eastfields Road. There's the allotments. Oh, come back. Can't quite make out the level crossing. Still, it is a long way away. And I suppose that's the common, or Three Kings Peace anyway, because that's the railway line. That would be Beehive Bridge over there. And you can't quite see the windmill. Pub, I mean. Cemetery, Thermal Plain, yes. Yes, crematorium off of Rome Road. Yes, the crematorium. So that's Refn Road. Hmm, very good. That's nice. It's a nice view that takes into, brings into view parts of Mitcham. So that was 51, let's go to 52. A similar view of the factory with Rome Road at the front. Let's try 53. Factory again, any better zooms? Yeah, two zooms now. Smith Meters Limited. Someone taking a stroll. Looks like they got suits on. They must be bosses or something. Cyclist. Someone walking a dog. Not sure. The shops again. Can we make out the names this time? Uh, that one there seems to be C O E. Okay. Well, as I say, the adverts I showed were. 1931, this is 
higher up view, so the wider area covered. Oops, same one. And similar again, but from a different angle. So wider, higher up, wider angle. Oh, there's a bus there now. The advert said that the 118 and the 130 stopped outside the factory, so that's there. So what is but what is that one? Could be either of them, the 118 or the 16. No, the 130. That was the end of that. Now if we look at the, I'm only going to look at one of these photographs from 1954 because they are pretty much the same view but at winter time so they're not too clear. This is January, 4th of January, a Monday. I draw your attention to this house building that's going on here. So this is the factory, Smith Meters. Oh, it's actually easy to read in this light, I suppose. And if we look at the map, we are looking at this area land here, which is off of Rowan Crescent. So let's turn off the overlay. We will now see Rowan Close. So these houses, Rowan Close, all these rows of houses, terraces of houses, were being built in 1953-1954. And you can actually see the roof being put on. You can't see the other building there, but um, yes, so that's kind of interesting, isn't it? And a lot of washing on the line. What's not what we got here? Is this stables of some kind? Hmm. Okay. Yes. So there you have it. Everything you ever wanted to know about where the Lidl factory was. That's the Marco refrigerator factory. That's the first part of this two part series on Rome Road. And Smith Meters, and now a trading estate in the surrounding area. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please press the like button. And if you'd like to view any more, um, subscribe. And then I'll, um, I'll do some more later on. Thank you.